Hi everyone. Welcome to Rose Hipnitz podcast episode 20. My name is Hannah and you can find me as Rose Hip Chick on both Ravelry and Instagram and I am on both of those places quite a bit so it's easy to get hold of me on those two places. Uh, I am in my studio just outside my house in Northern Tasmania, Australia. I live here with my husband and two little girls. I'm originally from Sweden, but I moved to Australia 10 years or so ago. And I do quite a bit of crafting, a lot of knitting, sometimes crocheting, I do some sewing, spinning, and some hand dyeing of yarn and fiber. Welcome to anyone who's watching for the first time and welcome back to anyone who's returning. Today I will talk about some things that I finished, both spinning and um, knitting. I have a few things on the go that I'll show you and um, what else? I have my show notes. Um, I have been washing fleece so I'll talk to you about that if I get the time. And I've had some lovely thing arrive in the mail that I'll talk to you about towards the end. Sorry, I'm drinking my coconut green tea again. Here in um, Tasmania today, and it's Wednesday today, it's the 21st of October. We're having quite a windy and overcast day, and it's quite... It's crazy because last week we had like a whole week with every day really hot, like a summer. Well, they were like summer days. And now yesterday and today it's back to being quite cold and just not very nice to be outside. But it's nice and cozy to do crafting inside. I hope the lighting is okay. I've got all the blinds up and trying to... Um, get all the natural light in so I hope things will be okay. Anyway, get on with it and I'm sorry if I'm a little bit distant and a bit not quite here today. It's all a bit in a rush because my youngest daughter is home, my, my oldest is in school but my youngest she's home today and um, she had quite a rough night and she didn't sleep very well so she was ready for her nap like an hour earlier than she normally has her nap so when I realized that she needed to go and have a sleep I was not quite ready to uh, sit down and record so I've rushed a bit to get everything ready to, to show you and um, to record so let's hope that she stays asleep you never know we'll get on with this episode and hope for the best hope that I'll get to show you everything I've planned Thank you um, to all of you for watching, new and returning. Um, I've had quite a few new subscribers in the last week and I'm, I have a feeling someone mentioned me somewhere and I know one person did and that was Tamara from Tam's Crafty Knits podcast. She mentioned me on her last episode. And that was very sweet of her, so thank you, Tamara. I have watched a few of Tamara's episodes, and um, I do enjoy watching them. She's done a bit of dyeing, which was, uh, well, I always find that interesting when people do some dyeing. And she does quite a bit of crochet, I think, and I'm hoping that she'll um, start knitting a pair of socks, <laughs> because i would be really happy to see... Um, her working on some socks and see how that all goes and um, as always thank you for any feedback any messages you've sent anyone who's joined a group new subscribers all of you just a big thank you the group seems to be increasing every week the um, people who watch are um, just increasing in numbers and that's really nice because even though I really enjoy doing this and um, it doesn't it doesn't matter how many people that watch really but it does sort of 
give me a bit more of a push to record um, every two weeks. So thank you to everybody. And I do hope that you enjoy the episodes and there's always something that I talk about that you find interesting. And if you want me to talk about anything different or more about anything, if you have any suggestions, any questions, just send me a private message on Ravelry or put a post in the thread for the episode in Ravelry. There is a Ravelry group, it's Rose Hipnitz Podcast in Ravelry and I do put a thread up for each episode that I put on YouTube with um, a link to the video and to the show notes. And the show notes I will always put on rosehipnitzpodcast.blogspot.com Okay, well I think I've done all of those admin things now, so let's get on with some knitting and spinning and other fun things. Um, I showed you last time that I had started a test knit, a new shawl, and this test knit was for Holly Dapp of the Swift Knits podcast. This is second or third time I'm test knitting for her. I really enjoy her patterns. The autumn morning shawl that I made a while back was one of her designs and I just really really love that shawl and I have been wearing it now that it's been a bit cooler. The new shawl that I made, I made out of the Bella Baby Layette which is a bamboo and wool yarn that I bought at Spotlight and um, it's um, I've used this for some baby and toddler knits before and I was quite happy with the result it does go a little bit oh, not really pilly or really fussy when you wash it but it seems to um, go a little bit denser when you wash it but it's it wears quite well but I had a few of these balls because I had planned to make a cardigan for my daughter. But I made her so many cardigans lately and she's not really wearing any of those. Uh, so I thought, no, I'll, I'll make this shawl out of it because it was for a DK weight that I test knitted. And this was really the only thing that I had enough meter, meters of to make the shawl and I thought I have it in my stash why go and get something different um, so I did that test knit and I started it last time and I just finished it yesterday well day before yesterday but yesterday I weaved in all the ends and this is it you can see I haven't blocked it yet so I've weaved in the ends but I haven't sort of got them right yet So that's it, and I knitted on 3.5 mil, millimeter needles, I believe, and I used, oh no, I can't remember quite how much I used for it, but I think it was four and a half balls of the yarn, 50 gram balls. But all the details are on my Ravelry project page, and. All of my project notes um, have all the details, so just go into Ravelry and check if there's anything you're interested in. So I really love it. It's it's quite long. <laughs> it's quite heavy because of the bamboo. It's 80% bamboo, uh, but it's lovely. And I haven't blocked it, but it looks quite good anyway because of the weight of the yarn. It was a really nice knit until I got up to the ruffle and the rows just seemed to be endless but it was okay and uh, I think I messed up somewhere on my eyelid rows and I ended up with the wrong stitch count and then I think it still looks okay so I'm happy with it but I think this mesh might be a little bit out of sync <laughs> but I love it and I think Oh, I might wear it. <laughs> I um, think it's a great piece for sort of the in-between seasons, spring and autumn, because of the bamboo. And it's 
not very hot on your skin. I should tell you what I'm wearing underneath is a test knit that I did years ago and the lady that designed it called it the Fafni shawl and I have said before that I um, I've tried to find the details of it in in Ravelry but I just I can't find it. It's knit out of the um, uh, Warm Ice Pure fingering weight and it's the Sabrina colorway and I really like it. It's so nice and soft on the skin. Anyway, that's what I've mostly been knitting on last couple of weeks and I'm really happy with it. I think um, Holly will release the pattern in November sometime and I think it's called the Chelsea Beach shawl. She did talk about it on her last episode which I think might have been episode 69 or 70 of the Swift Knits podcast so check that out if you're interested in this shawl. I think that was all I had to say about the shawl. Sorry, I'm feeling a bit cold and the tea is nice and hot so it warms me up a bit. And how is this shawl looking now? Not crazy. <laughs> um, the other thing that I finished was a skein of hand spun. So this is the fibre that I was spinning when I podcasted last time. It's a BFL from um, Wartha Fiber, and I talked about um, her last time. I did a short forward draw and a two ply, and I, I'm not sure. It looks like a sport to DK maybe. I do like how it came out, and it's so nice and soft and. Mm, I have about 220 meters of it and I also have a little mini skein that I did from the I had more singles on one of the bobbins so I just half those half the single onto two bobbins and made that little extra skein so I made this after watching the crafty um, lesson on Worcester to woolen spinning. So this was sort of the force, the first section of that crafty class. And I have continued to watch. The next one is spinning from the fold, and I have started watching that, but I haven't done any more spinning. But that's what I'm going to do next: the um, spinning from the fold. And I have some. Oh, sorry. Let's see. I have some just plain coloured merino, I think it is merino, that I'll use for just testing out some spinning from the fold. I did, oh sorry, I did also um, take the opportunity when I had a spinning wheel out to um, clear some singles off my bobbins, so I had a few I have a few bobbins because I have two spinning wheels and I had singles of different colours and fibres on them. So I had enough to Navajo ply this. This is a silk merino. So I got that off the bobbins and then I had these two. I think the purple is Corydale and the orangey colour is a merino. So I two ply those two together. And then I had, if you remember a few episodes back, I was spinning a tensile merino of tensile wool. And I had some of the single left. And then I had a merino that I might also have been spinning while I was podcasting a while back. They were similar colours, but yes, this is a two ply. And one ply is a tensile wool, and the other ply is the Tasmanian merino. Yeah, so I did, I did those and must say that it's, it's very satisfying to have all the singles ready and just go for it and ply and, and have a finished skein in, um, without much preparation. So that was fun. Okay, so they 
would have been what I have been working on most. I have also been doing things like mending. <laughs> I was um, sewing up a rip in a sleeping bag and I had some other mending to do. And um, those are the things that I, I normally just, I have a pile of those things. I never get to it because I have more fun things to do. But now I just made myself do it. And I must say that it was, it's a nice thing to do. And I really, I quite enjoyed it. And I was happy to have been using my skill to do something useful. Because sometimes I feel like, sorry, a lot of um, the knitting in, I create a lot of things that are not really necessary. They're fun to make and they're beautiful. But, yeah, sometimes I just make a lot of shawls and socks and it's not really, it's not something that I really, really need. But if you mend something, you have sort of saved something from being useless to being able to use it again. Anyway, I've been putting some time into that, so. Um, I have not been working much of any on any other projects. I can't remember. I've, the other things that I have been working on are my two pairs of socks. One pair of the socks are my Opal Surprise Sock, Rainbow Socks. I have them in my Chasing Acorn bag still. And, um, sorry, I think I had done the Fish Lip Kiss Heel on both of them last time. I make these on my 9 inch circular Chiago needles and this is the opal surprise the details of the colorway would be in my Ravelry project page so I've just put a few rounds in on the foot in one of them so I have not been doing much I I must say that I am tempted to sort of grab the bag and knit on them quite a bit because it's so easy and mindless and just fun with the colours but I I try to tell myself that these are a pair of socks that I want to have them as a work in progress for some time because it's always good to have one of those projects that you can just pick up and, and go so yes I should not be working on them when I'm sitting at home at night and I can be doing something that's a bit more complicated. And that's crazy because really knitting should be fun and you should just knit on what you want. Oh, this shawl's not doing what I want it to do. Um, but the other things that I have are also fun to knit on. So, yeah, I've worked a little bit on them, but not, not much because I want to have them available for car knitting or sitting in a waiting room meeting. Um, so the other pair of socks that I'm working on are the Agatha socks by Claire of um, New Hampshire Knits. And again, I can't remember exactly how much I had done last time. I'm making them out of the Regia Tweed in the colorway 90. And Claire used exactly this yarn for one of her samples. When she um, designed a pattern. So I have two socks started but I've divided them up so I've been working on one of them and I finished the leg. I did my cuff and twisted rib quite long and I did the leg and I have started on the heel flap. So they got a little bit of, of work done but not much. I do really enjoy knitting on them, so I think I'll be doing some more knitting on them now that the shawl is finished. So that's really all for the knitting and spinning. And see, I have this in still because I was just in a hurry to get out here and start recording. <laughs> I'm sure that I will forget to tell you something, 
but I am I'm happy if I get to talk to you a little bit and show you some of the things so it doesn't matter does it the other thing that I have been spending quite some time on is washing fleas and I think I talked to you about that last time a little bit or I mentioned that I started to wash a fleas and I have a whole pile of it right here and this is some of it <laughs> so I was given three big bags of fleas from three lamb I was given them about a year ago and um, they've just been sitting outside in their bags and in the end one of them was just ruined by sitting around so I thought I better get on with it and wash the other two so what I have done with the fleece and what I have done previously with the Corridale fleece that I I did a few years back is to use a method called the fermented suint method or the new no heat method and I think I first read about this method in uh, an issue of spin-off and I think it was an article by Julie McKenzie McQueen I think her name is I'm not sure I'll put links in the show notes um, and I used that for a Corridale fleece before and I was quite happy with it the method basically is that you take advantage of what's in the fleece and the suint is like the sweat of the sheep and that sweat the suint together with the the grease the wool grease the lanolin and water creates like a natural soap and that soap is meant to be able to clean the fleece and clean it by getting the grease out all the fetch matter and actual dirt like dust you'll have to wash out with water so I used that before and I used it again and I knew that it was for a more for a low grease fleece and I can't remember I think I put down like a primitive and a long wool breed it's a low um, grease breed and the marine this is the merino or a merino cross and quite hat high in grease but I, I knew that if I start with this method it will be easier to then continue with a wool scour or a hot soapy wash so anyway with the method um, you just you meant to use rain water but I didn't have any rain water available to me so I just used tap water I put a part of the fleece into these wash bags that I have just for washing fleas fill them up with fleas and then fill up a tub outside with water and just put it was three bags for one fleece put those in the water and just left it there I put a lid on left it there for about a week and during that time the suint and everything has made their work and then I I got it out and I um, knew that I needed to wash it a little bit more because it had quite a bit of grease in it and the water was absolutely disgusting and I might be able to put some photos in we'll see if I put photos in they'll be around here somewhere but then I washed it with this wool scour that I got hold of a few years back so I put a bit of that and I only use cold water this says to use hot water but I thought I'll just continue with the cold water so I used that with cold water and I did it in three batches so when I had been in that wool scour and water for a little while it's still in the bag I then just rinsed it so several times and I think for the first bag I had to rinse it more than ten times and that made me a little bit scared of how much work I had in front of me but I got it reasonably clean and then I took it inside to the laundry sink and I washed it with warm water a few times then got it out of the bag and just put it on a towel on a clothes rack 
for drying. And then I repeated this for the all of the three bags that I had. And actually for the second and third bag, they, um, they rinsed clear or clean in fewer washes, so I didn't have to rinse them as, as many times, which was lovely. So it must have been just a lot of dirt in the first bag. So then I had these three, the totals of the three bags out drying and I had them out in the sun, took them in at night and had them out at sun probably every day for a week. And now I've just put them here on my table <laughs> and it's all here. And I have the other fleas sitting. Um, some of it is still sitting in the um, cold water. I'm just working its magic and I got some of it out and rinsed it day before yesterday and used a wool scour and it's now drying. So what I did was for this um, fermented suet method you just keep using the same water and for every fleece you put through that water, dirty disgusting water, um, the more powerful that water is, so that mix and uh, fleeces get cleaned faster and better. So I must say with my second batch I did notice that um, most of the dirt and grease was out from the beginning so I didn't have to rinse them at all as much. So that's basically what I did. <laughs> and it's probably very boring if you're not interested in fleece or spinning. Um, so these are my a few locks that I've taken out of my pile of fleece. They're still greasy. They're not perfectly dry and I mean they still have a bit of the lanolin in them, which I don't mind for spinning it. I think that is actually only a good thing and um, what I do with these and this is I have work to do for months if not years I use a flicker brush or just like a dog's comb to fix this so I just tease out the ends and you get a lot of just waste First one side and then the other side and then you can spin this and I'm not sure like this staple length looks okay but I think there are quite a bit of shorter bits in here as well so I'm not sure how much I'm actually going to get out of it but yes, yeah, sitting and flicking all of this is going to be time consuming. So what I'm planning to do, you can see I have some fabric there by the sewing machine waiting. I'm going to make a couple of quite large bags, just drawstring bags, and store the fleece in that. And I'll just have to flick and comb it when I have time. So this is what I do with the flicker brush and I do this on my knee and have a piece of, of leather that I do it on because it can hurt your fingers quite bad with this and you can see it's a lot of, of waste and I have so much when I first did things like this I would try to use just about all of the fleece and try to go through all the all of these bits after but this are just short little pieces and they will just create all the little uh, things that peel off so really I have so much this just goes in the bin but this one is quite nice now that I've flicked it and it's beautiful and soft and I mean who doesn't love the the natural brown. Oh, I love it. I'm just shaking out my fingers because I already got 
got the flicker brush on. So yes, I have a bit to do there with that, but I just wanted to share with you how I do that. And I know that um, Claire from New Hampshire Knit, who's the designer of the Agatha socks, and uh, has the podcast, um, New Hampshire Knits audio podcast, uh, she's been washing a fleece too, or even a couple, I'm not really sure how many, um, but she um, she didn't do the same method as I did, but it did sound like similar amount of work. <laughs> okay, so I told you in the beginning that I received some mail and I've received a few things and I have a few things coming to me that I'll, I'll, I'll only share one thing with you today but oh, I've started I've, I've told you this that I've started working in a lab um, two full days a week which means that I now feel like I have a little bit of an income and last week <laughs> I um, I was left for the whole week on my own with the children, so I had to do everything. And I know there's single mothers out there who do this, and I think they're amazing. They probably have a routine and they make it happen. For me, I don't have that routine in place of doing everything myself, so. And just having another grown-up around just makes things easier when you have someone who can entertain the kids while you need to do things. But I, yes, when we had the two days, when we had school and childcare and work, I had to have everyone ready in the morning, I go to work for the whole day, pick up the kids, get home. They were tired, grumpy, unhappy, and I had to make sure dinner was organised and we were Eating, then it was bedtime, and yes, it was just full days, it was full on. Being at work was easy, it was nice and relaxing, but it was the morning and the evening that was quite hard. So, one night I was, <laughs> um, just thought I deserved a bit of pampering and a bit of a treat, so I might have gone on Etsy and done a purchase, and I don't do that very often. But I thought I deserved it. So something will be coming in the mail and I'll show that to you when it gets here. Um, but one thing that I'll show you today was a beautiful, amazing gift that a sort of local to me, a northern Tasmanian or northwest Tasmanian Indidaya sent to me. And that's um Kira from Tegel Tots um, yarns, and I had I discovered her, and I think I discovered her through someone else on Instagram. You know, when you just sort of click on a name for someone has made a comment or something, and you say, "Oh, who's that?" That might be how I found her, or on Ravelry. Anyway, I discovered her, and I realised that she was quite close to me. And she's an Indodaya, and I had never seen her work before, or never heard of her. So I, I contacted her, and I checked out her website and everything, and I um, got talking to her a little bit online, and um, she sent me a skein of her hand-dyed yarn, which is just amazing, and so nice of her. She sent me this beautiful, it's a very light greeny blue with this sort of mauve lavender colour. And this is a colourway she calls gelato on her scrumptious sock, which is quite a generous skein there. And she has a group on Ravelry, Tackle Tots. And she's on Facebook and she has a website. And I've talked to her a bit and I, I was a bit surprised that I haven't seen her because I think most Indie Dyers or many Indie Dyers have a presence on Etsy. 
but she doesn't. Kira mostly does her updates on Facebook, I think, and she has a website where she has um, photos of colorways that I think they're repeatable, so if you contact her, she'll be able to dye them up for you. She's also doing a few collaborations with some designers. So at the moment, she's doing collaboration with Faithful Yours Designs. So she's dyeing up a few different colorways and then there's some designs to go with the skeins of the kits. And um, she does quite limited releases and limited amounts. I think you can always contact her if you're interested in anything and she'll do a custom dye for you. But it, I, it was her photos on her website are beautiful and she's been doing a lot of beautiful skeins and it's so nice and soft. I think this will be something lacy, like a lace shawl or something. So pretty. But I was very happy to find her, find someone who's so close to me. And uh, I thought I just wanted to, to mention her and her yarns. She has them listed on Ravelry. And um, coming up, she has something she calls Colour Pop yarns where similar to this I think she'll have most of the skein is in the one colour and then just has a pop, pop of another colour. So I'm really excited to see um, what those will be like and I think I might have to um, put an order in <laughs> for one of those. So we'll see. But that's Teagle Tots and it came flat like a vacuum packed which was so funny and um, I left it for quite a while and I didn't open it because I thought I want to show you this but then I couldn't help myself I had to open it so when it first came out it was for first I could smell like an eucalyptus smell so there's something like that in there but then I think from having been in the bag for a bit for quite a long time it gave it a bit of a I don't know if it was a plastic smell or just from the vacuum sealing, however you do that. But I just um, put it up outside hanging and uh, then it was, it was fine. So that's that. So thank you so much, Kira. I'm so happy. I thought you might send me a little sample. And you send me a whole skein, so it's just wonderful. And I managed to talk about everything that I wanted to talk about without anyone waking up or anything happening, so that's good. I'll try to um, get some time later to edit this, make all the magic happen and put it up on YouTube. So, oh, I still haven't thought about a new knit along. If anyone has any inter in interesting ideas, or any ideas really, just let me know. I know that coming up now before Christmas, there's quite a few, like, I think Holly is having a um, accessories knit along. And then there's all these sort of Christmas knit alongs and gift knit alongs and I was trying to think of something different, but that you can sort of use and double dip in any of the other cows, but I can't, I haven't had enough time to think about it. So I think we'll start something in November. If you have any ideas, let me know. Otherwise I'll come up with something. I do have a, um, a new price on the way, so. I'll show that to you next time. I think it will be here by then. And uh, hopefully by then we'll have a cow started even. I'll just let everyone know in the Ravelry group, I think. So thank you everyone for watching and um, for sticking with me to the end.
through this craziness. And um, I'll be back. <laughs> and I'll have more things to show you. If you want to get a hold of me, like I've said before, PM or Rivalry is probably the best way. And uh, yes, I always love to hear from you. I can see that there's more and more subscribers, but I am... Um, I know some of you, but most of you, I don't really know who you are. So if you want to introduce yourself or send me a little note about yourself. And I'm really interested in to hear about how people found the podcast. So if you're happy to share that, I would love to, to know. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm so happy you're all there watching and I'll let you go now. And I uh, have to do a few things. So thank you, everyone. Have a great time until I see you for the next episode. Take care, everyone. Bye.